Hello, my name is Tim here again. Here another movie review, this time for Barbarian. Now, in my opinion, I'll just go ahead and say it. This was a great flick. Uh, I'd give it a 4 out of 4. It does have flaws. There are some flaws here, and there's some flaws in the script. But, overall, I had a great time on this one. The movie's got Justin Long in it. Um, it starts out with this, like, black chick or whatever who's going to stay at this, like, uh, I guess it's supposed to be kind of like a bed and breakfast type place or whatever. Or, like, some place she's rented out to stay at. And she goes there to stay. And, uh, there's already this dude there. And they find out that they both accidentally and coincidentally got this same place. And the, the movie really plays with expectations. Because so the first, like, whole act of the movie is just these two. This black chick and this random white dude who talks about, like, he's a musician and all that. And they're just staying there. And her, she wakes up, like, in the middle of the night. And her door's open. And he's in there, like, having nightmares. And she, like, wakes him up. So you're thinking, like, is this going to be, like, a serial killer story? Is this white, random white dude, like, a, um... Sorry about that, I had a hair in my mouth. But is this random white dude like a psychopathic serial killer or something? You know, the movie really plays with the expectations. Then later on you find out, no, there's like an underground tunnel in the place that the black chick finds. And then she comes back out and the dude goes down there looking. And he just kind of disappears. And this is where you get some kind of problems with the movie. Like, she goes down there looking for him, like hollering. And she hears, like, no answer. So she actually goes down to this big, huge, dark tunnel. Like, realistically, unless it's like one of your loved ones, like a brother or a sister or somebody you're in love with, you really wouldn't go down through there like that looking for somebody. She would have immediately went and got the police. I mean, that's what she would have done. But no, she goes down there and all at once the creature just jumps out and crushes the guy's skull. And then we just see it, like, it's her screaming and the film cuts off and we cut to Justin Long. Now, uh, it cuts to Justin Long. I'll say this, I like the idea of, like, the whole psycho twist. If you think the whole movie's gonna be about these two and the movie plays with expectations on rather what it's actually gonna be about. Like, is the white dude a serial killer? Is he not? Is it gonna be, like, a ghost story? Is the white dude already dead? Is he supernatural? But no, it's not the white dude at all. It's just this random monster that's, like, living inside the bottom of the house or whatever. And you see, like, this room where somebody was, like, recording somebody and, like, held them hostage and all that. Um, but yeah, you get to like Justin Long, who's like the one written the place out, I guess. And you get this kind of like hint at his backstory that he might be an asshole or whatever, or a bad person. But later on, the movie starts saying, no, I'm a good person. I just did a bad thing. But he goes down in there into the house or whatever, and he's, uh, he's staying there. And he goes down into the tunnels, and he runs into the big giant creature. It's like this Hills Have Eyes mutant creature, and it chases after him. And he falls into this trap hole or whatever, and it locks him in there. And the black chick's still alive, and it's like keeping him hostage in there and trying to treat him as like it's babies or whatever. But you find out, uh, once again, through another flashback, that uh, Richard Brake, of all people, who, do, who always plays a crazy guy, seems like it, was, like, running, like, owned the place and lived there, and he was, like, kidnapping, like, little girls and stuff and raising them in the room to, like, be adults, and he was raping them and making them have children, and he was raising the children and raping the children, so it was, like, incest after incest until it got to, like, this mutant hills have eyes type creature. And you also find out that, like, he's still alive down there, and Justin Long, like, runs in between, which I'm not really sure why he's still alive. Like, uh, if he was, like, raping this thing or whatever or and all that, and it was just, like, his, his uh, like, 27th incest kid, then why is it, like, keeping him alive when you have, like, resentment towards him? I don't know. We don't really get enough detail about the backstory, and he just happens to kill himself when uh, Justin Long happens to walk in there. So it's a bit contrived. But um, the black chick, like, gets away. Justin Long gets trapped down in there. And then she goes to the police. This is where it gets a little dumb because there's like another black dude in the neighborhood or whatever who knows about this thing and knows it's in there yet he never calls the police to like come investigate. And I can kind of get maybe them ignoring him or whatever and treating it like, oh, it's just some silly urban legend or whatever. But when this other chick like goes there and they're like, uh, she's like, no, a person's trapped in there, a person's trapped in there. And they're like, well, she's just a crackhead. Let's just ignore her. Like, no. They're like, we're not going to go in this house because you don't own the property or whatever. Like, no, realistically, if they thought, if she kept claiming somebody was trapped in there and I mean, realistically, they would have went in there even with just probable cause. I mean, if she was screaming that much and all that, they would have probably have given her like a drug test or something, but they would have went in there. But yeah, and but she goes in there, Justin Long gets rescued and all that, she like drives a vehicle into the creature. I thought she was going to become like Ash from Evil Dead and that was going to be the ending of the movie. She like goes in there and just starts blasting the thing with a shotgun, but no, she runs it over, rescues Justin Long, they go to like stay with the black dude. Um... Uh, this homeless guy and he's like saying no the creature never has never come here and then uh, all at once it busts the wall you know it's going to come but at the same time it was kind of a good jump scare because it was kind of fun it busts in there like rips his arm off and like beats him with it so he's dead and then it starts chasing after them and they climb on top of this like uh, uh, building type thing or whatever and Justin Long's up there and this is when you find out no Justin Long is actually an asshole he is an evil person and he grabs the black chick and like throws her off the thing so the creature will jump after it and like basically commit suicide so he's willing to sacrifice this chick's life to save his own ass 
which automatically shows you that no he's a piece of shit but which is weird too because he has a gun he could have just shot the creature but he just jumps into defense mode of wanting to do something bad just to save his own life so yeah he's a coward and he's not a good person at all and he goes down there and the black chick's like still alive and the creature's still alive and at this point you want it to kill justin long the movie has justified justin long's death at this point so the creature gets up grabs his head and, like squishes his skull like puts his thumbs to his eye sockets and kills him and then the girl's laying there and it keeps wanting to get up and you kind of feel sorry for the creature because it's like mama because she puts the gun to its head and it's like says see ya or whatever kind of like something like that it's like mouthing the words um, and so you get the idea that this is really just a really horrible like entity or creature that's came into existence it's through years of abuse that it, it probably is just better off dead and so she shoots it in the head and through the credits we see her like walking off so she lives she gets away the creature's dead and that's the end of the movie so overall one out of I'd give it a four out of four pure entertainment value the script has some problems and it jumps around timeline wise a little bit too much but yeah overall it's entertaining really entertaining and it is it is pretty much a B movie in concept um even though it looks like it has like a good budget to it, but it's not got like a big scope of the movie, so it works with the budget it has. But yeah, overall, four out of four, really entertaining. I really enjoyed it. I like this way better than both Terrifier films, in my opinion. See, this is what I'm talking about. This movie has a story. The Terrifier films just don't have an interesting enough story. It's just mostly gore. This film has gore, but it also has a story and characters that you're interested in and care about, and it also has interesting... Um, suspense and direction, which the Terrifier films are built on gore, which I'm okay with. But at the same time, you need more to hook me into a movie than just mindless gore. There has to be more there. Uh, other than like the killer clown in those movies and the lead in the second film, there's just nothing else to those flicks. So yeah, overall, this is a four out of four. I really enjoyed it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again.